Hey guys, welcome to the Talentless Podcast. I'm, of course, Dando. Today, my guest is going to be none other than former host of uh, Time Masters and Wipeout. They're, they're, they're the two shows that I remember him most for, but uh, his name is Tony Johnston. So, any kid from the 90s, game shows in the 90s were unbelievable. We all loved them when we were kids. We used to race home from school. We had Amazing. We had Challenger, which I think was on Saturday mornings. I'm not quite sure. Challenger. We had Time Masters. We had Wipeout. We had Dallas. We had so many good shows, good kids game shows in the mid to late 90s. Where have they all gone? What happened to really great, fun kids game shows? The, the, the shows these days, the kids are too smart. I want to see kids shooting hoops and misspelling the word shark on a giant keyboard and finding keys to win Game Boy Colors. That's a kids game show. You don't need to know what the, the third president of the United States was. Who cares? I want to see kids having fun. And the best bit about it was the hosts used to look like they were just having just as much fun as the kids. And I think amazing that 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 maze i think every kid growing up in the 90s dreamt of being able to go through that maze just once so let's hope that one day the tv executives out there wake up and bring back all those glorious shows from the 90s but as i said though tony johnston he's going to be my very first guest of 2015 here on the time of this podcast the interview went so well I apologize if I sound like an absolute fanboy throughout but it was just so weird but talking to this guy that i used to watch as a kid on tv Having a conversation with him, and I, I couldn't, I couldn't put my head around it. I know you couldn't see me when I was doing, while I'm doing the interview, but I was just smiling the whole time when he was telling me stories about behind the scenes and Time Masters. I had the biggest grin on my face. It was so cool. So sit back, relax, and enjoy my interview with none other than Tony Johnston. Welcome to the Torrent List Podcast. I am Dando, and today my guest is the man who most would know from his many years as a TV presenter over here on shows like The Great Outdoors, Time Masters, and Wipeout. However, he is now known as the voice of the drive home on World Radio Switzerland. He is none other than Tony Johnson. Tony, how are we, mate? <laughs> what an introduction, Brendan. It's, it's good to catch up from the other side of the world, sitting here in Geneva. And outside at the moment, we've got uh, zero degrees, and uh, we're expecting snow on the weekend. So, uh, so here we are. It's nice, nice to catch up. Have you had your chocolate croissant yet? <laughs> Very popular in this part of the world. <laughs> yeah. Everywhere you go, I mean, chocolate's such a big part of the, the Swiss life. And uh, everywhere you go, there's there's always chocolate. They have little chocolates on the reception desk. You you go somewhere and they offer you chocolate. They give you chocolate. I've put on a bit of weight since I've been here. I mean, the old days on the kid shows, Wipeout and Time Masters, uh, you know, put on a bit more weight since since back then. You were very sexy back in your day. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay you later. Thank you, Thank <laughs> yeah. you very much. It was it was all smoke and mirrors. Actually, um, at, at the time, I was I was uh, seeing the, the makeup lady on on the show. Oh, probably wow. a little known fact, but I was actually going out with the makeup lady on on some of those shows back then. So I think she she made me look extra special. So what from so a different lady from different shows or? <laughs> no, 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 not not multiple <laughs> makeup artists on different different programs. It, it was the uh, it was the one, but she used to work her work her magic, so to speak. We we had a good time. It was you know great memories. I mean, we're going back to the late eighties, into the early nineties, and mm. it was a it was a real era, Brendan, of of children's television production yep. in in Australia, and particularly in Brisbane. Brisbane was a real base and a real hub for these programs. You had shows like Totally Wild coming out of Brisbane. You had shows like Agro's Cartoon Connection great show. out of Brisbane. <laughs> Yeah, great show, and and Jamie Dunn was my, actually my first boss, my first producer, wow. way back when in, in 1986. And uh, you know, I was really fortunate and lucky to have learnt from a lot of these people. And I, I look at that time as being a, a bit like an apprenticeship for my career in, in television and now in radio and, and in media. And when I look back to that, there were things that, that I learnt then that you couldn't have learnt at university. And I still draw on today that that whole ability with kids TV. You never know what's going to happen next. I mean, the old saying, never work with children and, and animals. <laughs> and I was, doing, I, was, I was doing both, you know, every, every single day. And some of those skills of being able to ad-lib, to improvise, to be spontaneous. Even today in my work here, uh, with World Radio Switzerland in, in Geneva, where I'm interviewing, um, you know, some of the, the, the high-profile people that are living and, and working here, I still draw on those skills today. Maybe not as as perhaps light-hearted and frivolous as we were in the old days on the kid shows, where we used to be quite playful. Yep. But still, to this very day, drawing on those uh, on those same skills. How hard was it? I've been going back and watching some episodes of Time Masters and whatnot on YouTube. 
sometimes when you were interviewing the kids at the start, it just felt like you must yeah. have been pulling your teeth out. Was it just really hard? <laughs> Firstly, I'm a bit worried about you watching old episodes of Wipeout at <laughs> the time, Mars. Just <laughs> You need to get a life. I know, right? But um, look, it was, it, was, it was hard work in that we were recording uh, five episodes in in one day, and there were there were production reasons for that. As you know, we were alternating with Jane Sherry on on Amazing, mm. who who was my colleague back then, and so they would do a series, and then we would do a series, and we had to get it done really quickly. So we'd do two or three recording days per week. We'd do five shows in a day, and the thing was, you had the kids would come in on on the buses from school, and they'd arrive maybe 9, 9.30 in the morning, we had to be finished by 2.30 in the afternoon to get them back to school, oh. to get them home. So, you know, between 9.30 in the morning and 2.30 in the afternoon, we were cramming in five episodes, and it was go, go, go. <laughs> You'd finish one show. Oh, man, I, honestly, I'd get to the end of it, and, and I literally, I had a headache. I'd get to 3 o'clock, and I couldn't talk. I'd get home, and I couldn't say a word. <laughs> And, you know, it was, it was pretty full on. Um, but then the, the, the positive side or the upside of that was that we'd then get two days off a week okay. because you'd be recording for three and have, you know, you'd have a long weekend every weekend. <laughs> so it was kind of, that was the, you know, that would make up for it. But in terms of working with the kids, I think, you know, occasionally you'd get some quiet ones. Occasionally you'd get some rowdy ones. Occasionally, you'd get some who, you know, were it was a bit of a struggle to talk to them. But that was a part of the skill in trying to just gently tease out a response and work with them and play with that. And if they if they didn't respond to that question, you'd try a slightly different question to see if you yep. could elicit a response. And that was, you know, you had to think on your feet because you think, okay, the kid just said yes or no, as, <laughs> as teenagers do. You know, one word responses. All right, let's try another question. But meanwhile, in the background, you've got the floor manager going, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, you know, winding, winding up. Yeah. So there's, there was a lot going on. They were big days. Um, but I'm, I'm really proud of, of what we managed to achieve back then. I think we did three series, Brendan, of, of Time Masters, um, four or five series of White House. Yeah, four, yeah, yeah. Episodes in each yeah, so it's quite, you know, it's quite a bit. I, well, like I was saying before, like you guys, and you mentioned as well, you are like the epitome of my childhood viewing. Like, there's a few of you. There's you, there's James Sherry, there's like Scott McRae, yeah. Ryan and Jaden Agro. They are like, that is my childhood right there. It's like, I can't believe that I'm talking to one of you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of interesting for me too, because I didn't realize at the time, because I was in my early 20s, I was just, I was just having a blast. You know, I'd, I'd started in TV when I was in my final year at school, mm. finished school, went, went to uni, did a couple of years at uni, dropped out, um, started working full full time in, in media. And you sort of didn't realize at the time because it was it was kind of your job. And we had a really great team that we were working with of, of young people all in a similar age group. So we were just having a blast. And you didn't realize at the time the impression, the depth of the impression that you're making on the lives of, of young Australians. And now that I reflect on that, I think, oh my goodness, there was a bit of a responsibility. Are we responsible now for some of the ills of society? But there was a bit of a responsibility that came with that. And I didn't realise at the time what it was. I was basically just doing my job and, and having a, a good time and being reasonably well paid for it. But now that I, I reflect on all of that, I think, wow, you know, that we were a part of a generation of, of young Australians in the late 80s uh, into the early to mid, mid 90s. And ever, ever so occasionally I'd get someone coming up in the supermarket who was, you know, turning 30 or 35 going, <laughs> oh, I used to watch you. I used to race home from school to watch you. And I'm, I'm thinking, wow, you know, all of that was going on uh, that, that I didn't necessarily know about or, or realise at the time. And now that I look back, I think, gee whiz, I wish I could go back and do it all over again. I'd probably, do, I'd probably try and do it a bit better this time around, but uh, that was great fun. <laughs> I think if I walked around to a room full of people my age and held up a photo of you, yeah. it would make people smile because they would remember <laughs> racing home from school. Like, you, you're just one of those guys, you know? Yeah, look, I, I was just doing my thing. Um, I love what I do. Uh, I... It's it's in, for me the the process of creating something is very, is very satisfying, and uh, so I was always motivated by the creativity. My family had a background in in advertising. My dad used to print newspapers, so I I guess I was headed for communication or journalism or presenting in in some way. And even even to this very day, and I'm sitting here in the studio right now in Geneva, and 
I, I'm about to do three pre-recorded interviews for today and write five news stories. Mm. And I come in at the start of the day with a clean slate. And it was the same with uh, Wipeout and Time Masters and Great Outdoors and uh, Simon Townsend's Wonder World. We come in at the start of the day with nothing. We, we, we had literally a blank canvas. And every day you've, you've, you've got to work with that and create and come up with some content that hopefully for that generation of young Australians... Uh, we were, you know, in, in some way being mildly entertaining. At least I tried to be funny. It wasn't <laughs> always the case. Uh, we tried to be interesting. We tried to be informative. And we tried to satisfy all of those objectives of what children's television was about and hopefully still is today. I, I hope that through that, yes, it was entertainment, uh, but at the same time, I hope that in some way we enhanced or influenced the lives of, of young people in a, in a positive way. And that's what always was... Uh, a big motivation for me was the creativity, was the creation of the content, and then you know hopefully in some way we've we've made someone's day. And interestingly, Brendan, it, in addition to the kids who would watch, we had a generation of um, shift workers who'd get home at that time of the day because they finish a bit earlier. Mm. Who used to watch and retirees, and I, I would get people you know ever so occasionally coming up going, oh, when I finish my shift at, at this place, I'd come home and watch, or you know older people, more mature people coming up saying, oh, you know, I used to I used to turn that on in the afternoon before the five pm news or whatever. <laughs> so you know, I'm really I feel privileged to have have been involved with with all of those programs. You go back and watch it now, it just seems like so much of it just off the cuff. Like, were you given much directions or was it just like, here's a card with info about the kids, just go and have some fun and do it? That's a really good question. And we would guess, and James might sort of tell you a, a similar thing, but we would get, for each show, we would get, I would get before the programs information on each of the contestants that I'd go through a few days before. We'd have production meetings and whatever. So I could work out, okay, I'm going to talk to Brendan about, you know, BMX bikes. I'm going to talk to Sally about her doll collection, even though I don't know anything about <laughs> dolls. Uh, you know, and so I'd have that information prior to. Then we'd have these little cards that we'd hold up. You might have, you might remember on the set, we'd hold up these cards. Mm. And the cards had, like, some notes on the contestants or the cards had all the questions on there. And the answers, and you had to be very careful that you didn't. The way you held your cards, you didn't give away the answers to the <laughs> contestants. So I was, all, I was all, always really mindful of that. But that's all I had, and everything else was was made up. So you kind of, you had the the skeleton of the content or the program, and then you had to add the the, the meat and the flesh to that to the bones to create the, the program itself. So a lot of it was the big thing for me was you listen to the responses of the contestants and you pick up on that mm -hmm. and you try and respond really appropriately, really quickly in hopefully some way that, you know, once again informative and, and entertaining. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't, but and you you know, over time you develop that that rapid fire response that ability to to be able to come back with something and keep it flowing it's all about flow it's all about flow yeah, that's, yeah. and uh getting getting to the break and getting to the end of the show and making that as seamless as you possibly can and yeah i think in, in the end i think you know after i think we did about i did about four or five hundred of those episodes i think in the end we we, we got there <laughs> some, <laughs> some days it just wasn't happening the mouth wasn't keeping up with the brain or the brain wasn't keeping up with the mouth and you know like anyone you have a bad day and you know you just sort of it, it wasn't happening but uh, part of the skill i think was put, putting on a face that allowed you to, to still look like you knew what you were doing and you were having a good time and to get through without anyone being able to pick up on that. The hardest was always the fifth show uh, in the day when you're recording the fifth <laughs> show and you get to the end, you're stuffed, you, you've absolutely had it. And just keeping that, that energy up. And I, I don't know where it came from, but it just sort of came and maybe it was the two or three hundred uh, shouting, screaming, cheering kids in the audience <laughs> that kept you going. But uh, yeah... Well, just be, I know you're running short on time, so I'll just ask a couple more quick ones and I'll let you go back. I know you're a very, very busy man. So, oh, it's all good. The, no, it's all good. I'm happy to, happy to talk to a fellow Australian. <laughs> My fellow Australian, <laughs> Bob Hawk used to say. <laughs> there, was, there, was so many, there was so many good shows, like game shows for kids back then in Australia. It was Time Masters, amazing, Challenger. Why do you yeah. think that the stations now, these days, seem to have you know, steered away from those type of kids' game shows to more 
basic, trivia-based shows. Because they're not fun anymore. It's only for smart kids. And I wasn't a smart kid, so I wouldn't have liked it. (laughs) Neither was I. (laughs) I was just lucky I I had all of the answers in front of me. Yes. Look, gosh, the evolution of children's television, we have a very long, strong history of children's television in Australia going back, even back before our time, to the shows I grew up with when I was a kid. And actually, funnily enough, you, you know, this, I don't think I've ever told this to anyone before, Brendan, but I was actually a contestant on a kid's quiz show myself called Matchmates. Really? In the late 70s. Yep. In the late 70s in Sydney, TCN 9 in Sydney, I was a contestant on Matchmates, late 70s, early 80s. And I think that kind of motivated me and inspired me maybe in a subtle subconscious way to perhaps one day want to work uh, on, on those types of shows. So it goes way back, you know, and, and uh, shows like Skippy, the shows I grew up with, and uh, Robin Dean on the Curiosity Show. Remember that one? Um, you know, and, and there were numerous. The evolution of children's television, I think, after, after us, I mean, we did produce a lot, and mm. it was cost-efficient television. I know that. The reason they did five in a day was because it was cost efficient. Unlike, say, a magazine show like Wonder World or Totally Wild, where they have uh, crews out every day, uh, they have post production costs, we were able to get five done in one day, bang, done. It was cost efficient for the networks, but it was informative and, and entertaining. Uh, and it rated reasonably well at the, at the same time. As to the evolution since that um, time, we could talk for hours as, as to what's ha- happened and why it's happened. My sense and my feeling is that the, the network executives generally always want something that's going to be uh, affordable. They want something that's going to fill a gap, fill a hole in a satisfactory way such that it provides a strong lead-in for the audience heading into the later part of the afternoon towards the news. So there was a build-up. There were the kids' quiz shows, then there were the adults' quiz shows, and then there was the news. So there was this build-up. So if the kids' quiz shows held their own, they gave a good lead-in for the audience ratings and the figures leading into the adults' quiz shows, which then gave a good lead-in to the news. I guess over the years, what we lost perhaps was that hub of children's television in different places. Adelaide was a hub at one point. Brisbane was a hub at one point. They central, I know even during my time, they centralised some of that programming back to Sydney Mm. uh, and and, and back to Melbourne, but more so, I think, to to Sydney. And I think what they lost through that, and this is not a criticism because I'm still in touch with, with a lot of my contemporaries who are now executives at Australian television networks, they lost a lot of experience. They lost people who'd been working on children's programs in Adelaide and, and Brisbane and elsewhere uh, for many, many, many years. And when they pulled those shows out, they lost those people. They lost that experience. And then it just became more a process, I think, and, and often that process driven by cost. Let's make as much as we can for as little as we can. And, you know, I guess uh, we could delve further into it from, from there, but they would be some of my initial thoughts on on the evolution of, of children's television and what's happened in children's television. To be honest, I haven't watched a lot in more recent times. I would agree with you, Brendan, that I think it, you know, perhaps a bit of the fun has gone out of it. And, and maybe it was a different generation. It was a different time. It was a different era. Kids these days perhaps are doing different things, more screen time. You know, we didn't have... When we were doing these shows, the internet was in its infancy. Yeah. Now you've got all of these, um, you know, these, these digital media options that uh, that young people have got available to them. Once upon a time, it was just the box. It was just the telly. Get home. Yeah. Turn it on. <laughs> yeah. You know, bring it on. And now it's like, you know, no shortage. There's such a gamut of possibilities. There's no shortage of, of things. For digital distractions, as they say. Six-year-olds just watching their iPads at lunchtime. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. So, uh, you know, I, I think back to... It was the early days of the internet, as I, was, as I was saying, and our question writers used to have a set of encyclopedia in the office <laughs> because there was no internet to consult <laughs> as a resource. And so, you know, they'd write their questions from newspapers and from books and from encyclopedia. So that's, gosh, it almost sounds a bit antiquated. <laughs> <laughs> Sounding like a dinosaur here, aren't I? No, you're not. <laughs> well, but before I let you go, mate... There's one last question. You've yep. come so far, done so much with your career. Go back to, say, 86, yep. 87 when you first broke out. 
Where, where did you see yeah. your career heading? And do you feel like you've accomplished what you had intended to? Mm, what a what a thoughtful, thought provoking question to finish on, <laughs> Brendan. I really, I, <laughs> I really appreciate that you've actually taken some time to to think about all of this. When I first started in in '86, I was going to school during the week, grade twelve, and I was hosting a music video show on Saturday mornings on Beta Q7 in uh, South East Queensland. Mm-hmm. Jamie Dunn Agro was my producer. Uh, I learned so much from him, and the f- the first thing he told me that I I still keep in the back of my mind today is just be yourself. Mm-hmm. And if you are yourself, people will either like you or they won't, and you will be more relatable. And and that's what I've always tried to, to achieve through the work that I do. Back in 86, I, I was sort of thinking about advertising because of the family connection, as I was saying earlier. I, um, this might sound a bit serious and a bit academic, but I was mm. kind of thinking about law. Mm. I don't know why. Um, I, I guess they ultimately they tell stories too, and I, that's how I see myself as a as a professional storyteller or a corporate poet, a corporate story, a storyteller. And then when it all of a sudden, and my dad said to me back then, "Listen, you know, listen, son, you need <laughs> to think about getting a proper job, <laughs> not working in TV." And that you know that was really playing on my mind too. And when I realised that, hold on there could be a career in this because I had a few people saying to me, well, listen, when you finish school, you know, we might be able to give you a job on this show or that show or, or whatever, because I actually did some stuff on Wombat back then as well. And I thought, you know what, I could actually make a career out of this. So I went to uni and I was still doing the music video show on Saturday mornings and all my mates used to get me to request songs for them on the (laughs) show for their girlfriends. You know, it was, it was, it was a hoot. And I, I was doing communications, journalism communications, and I did two years of that. Then I was offered a full-time job with Channel 9 with Laurel Edwards doing the OK Only mm. Kids show that mm-hmm. Rob Elliott was also on. Ooh, Rob, okay. who went on to do Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. So it was Laurel Edwards, who's married to Troy Casadale, the country music yeah. artist, Rob Elliott and, and myself, and a, a lady called Nathie Gaffney at 9. And I got a full-time job, so I bailed on uni, and it just sort of went from there. I, I wasn't taking it too seriously at that time. I thought, okay, if this lasts for a few years, you know, just enjoy the ride. And then I guess after a period of time, you know, I moved to Sydney to do Wonder World, the new Wonder World. With now, here's a couple of people you need to talk to for your podcast: yeah. um, Pascal Fox, who used to host Wonder World, Wonder World yep, yep, yep. And uh, Nick, 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 uh, Nick Bennett. No, Nick, the comedian. Um, that used to be on Wonder World as, as well. And it was around that time I was thinking, okay, this is getting a bit more serious. I could make a career out of this. And it was from there that I started to think ahead and say, okay, well, one day maybe I'll, I'll get I always wanted to do the news. And, and funnily enough, to this day, after 27 years in media, I still haven't read the news. I do, <laughs> I do the news on my radio show here in Geneva, mm. in Switzerland, but I still haven't read the news on the TV. So maybe when I come back one day, I'll, I'll, I'll have a crack at the news. But um, I started to think ahead and, and I thought, you know what would be great is some lifestyle TV after I finish in kids' TV. And very thankfully, I had this opportunity with thanks to Tim Warner, who's now the head of the, the Seven Network in Australia. Um, Tim was our executive producer on The Great Outdoors, and mm-hmm. Tim gave me the opportunity to present with The Great Outdoors with Ernie Dingo and Bridget Adams and, and uh, you know the team we had there. And I had five amazing years travelling the world with The Great Outdoors. So I kind of got more into the lifestyle TV. Then after that, I did do the weather for seven years in Queensland. And then an opportunity came up in the early 2000s, 2003, to work in radio, doing a talk radio program at night in Brisbane for 4BC. And I, I, I then got into radio. I never thought that that would be a career option, really. But it, it came up. And I've been doing radio pretty well since for the last uh, 11 years, in addition to keeping my hand in, in, in TV as well. And I never thought radio might be a career option, but it came up. And I love radio. TV is still my first love, but I love radio. And the reason is that you still draw on a lot of those presenting skills, but you don't have the pictures to back you up. You've got to create the pictures Mm. through your ability to tell the story and through theatre of the mind. And so I'm really enjoying the radio. And being here in Geneva, a lot of international organisations based here in Geneva, a lot of uh, intergovernmental and multinational companies, NGOs, UN-based organisations. I get to talk to some amazing people. Yesterday I was talking to the Secretary-General 
of a major UN organization. Mm. I was talking to Davos for the World Economic Forum. You know, this is big stuff. And sometimes I think, my goodness, do I know enough about this? <laughs> and you have to step you have to step up a bit from the old, you know, kid show days. But it's all been a progression. And here we are, um, you know, off to careers come and go in media and, and, and still going strong in my own little way. So I've really enjoyed sharing that with you, Brendan, and, and, and connecting and getting in touch. And I really credit what you're doing. I think podcasting is so now and so exciting for 2015 and beyond. It's been around for a while, but it is hot and you're onto something. And I love the fact that you're delving into Australian pop culture. So uh, Nick Penn, Nick Penn was the name of the comedian. I've just remembered from yes. Wonderwall. So there you go. You've got to, got to talk to Nick Penn and uh, Pascal Fox. But um, thank you very much for the opportunity to, to have... Uh, had a chat with you today and share some of um, what I was going through at that time and to relive some of that. Yeah, no, like I said, mate, it's been absolute pleasure. Good luck with um with everything you're doing over at World Radio Switzerland. I'm sure you're killing it over there and um, look forward to another chat hopefully Thanks, in the very near future. And don't forget, let's play Wipeout. Oh, yes. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> Cheers, <mate. laughs> See you, mate. No worries, Brendan. Bye-bye. Good on you. Bye. All right, guys, how cool was that? If you were a kid from the 90s, there is no way you did not enjoy that interview. Him telling all those stories, but behind the scenes from Time Masters and Wipeout, <laughs> I loved it. I, I, I don't care if you didn't like it. I loved it. I had the greatest time talking to Tony. I can't wait to talk to him again. I'm having so much fun now doing the Toronto's podcast, and I can't wait to talk to all the other the other hosts of game shows that I used to watch growing up. Uh, Scott McRae, Jay, Jay, I'd love to get Jade and Ryan on, uh, James Sherry. Who, who wouldn't want to interview James Sherry? So... Thanks for listening to the Torrent This podcast with Tony Johnson here on TorrentThis.tv. If you haven't already, please uh, subscribe to the podcast, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and just you know enjoy the enjoy the website. It's it's been a long time coming. I appreciate you guys for taking the time to listen to the podcast. And if you if you haven't already, please share with your friends and let them all know that TorrentThis.tv is now live. So it's, it's it's just a plethora of entertainment here on the on the website. There's so much. You, there's, it's, I think it's almost impossible not to find something that you would like. So we've got plenty of podcasts, uh, video shows, articles, all pop culture related. So please, torrentthis.tv, tell your friends. And thanks for listening to the Torrent This Podcast with Tony Johnson. I am Dando, and I'll see you guys next time.